Hi, Ben Carpenter here with another video for you. I'm going to give you a quick summary of a decade of research on post-workout nutrition. I'm not going to try and break down every single study out there because this video will be so long and so dull that no one would ever get to the end of it. Instead, what I'm going to try and do is identify the trends for you. So you can watch this video for five or ten minutes and get an idea of the shortfalls in certain research and why recommendations have changed on post-workout nutrition. So, 10 years ago, literally 10 years ago this year, there was a book that I had by John Ivey and Robert Portman called Nutrient Timing. This set the trend for a lot of kind of nutritional dogma or something that we now view as dogma. They, the, there was a need for a post-workout shake within your anabolic window. So people would finish a workout and immediately try and ingest a carbohydrate and protein shake, usually in a ratio of four or three to one, with the intention that the timing of this shake was of the utmost importance. It had four main goals. Replenish muscle glycogen levels, spike insulin for its proposed anabolic action, prevent muscle protein degradation, and spike muscle protein synthesis, the last two being markers of muscle growth. So you would finish a set and you might have say 40 grams of whey, you might have 160 grams of glucose or glucose and maltodextrin or glucose maltodextrin and fructose, uh, that kind of blend. But essentially people were, were drinking sugary drinks immediately post-workout to capitalize on their anabolic window of opportunity. So the trend changed slightly. There are a lot of flaws in the research to start with. These included testing on fasted athletes where nutrition, um, nutritional needs would change depending on whether you've eaten pre or post workout or not. So testing on fasted athletes might not necessarily have relevance to people who, that have eaten recently. Um, also on untrained athletes, where again the relevance will um, vary slightly. Um, most importantly were acute effects. So you might test muscle protein synthesis and degradation, for example, but these are very short term effects. The most important question is if you did this every day for six months, would it actually achieve any greater result? Um, so taking a, an acute effect and trying to extrapolate a long term um, theory from it is quite dangerous territory because it doesn't always pan out. Another flaw was looking at carbohydrate solutions to carbohydrate and protein rather than protein on its own. So carbohydrate and protein came out on top, um, which is what set the trend for the research. It wasn't until later that it was studied where you compare protein to carbohydrate and protein. And protein, if consumed in adequate quantity, would spike muscle protein th synthesis and hinder protein degradation to to the same extent. So the need for carbohydrate ingestion post-workout diminished. So carbs and protein post-workout disappeared. The trend for protein post-workout was a kind of new age. Then, more recently, Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld, or Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, as of recently, um, looked at the relevance of the anabolic window itself. So is there really a short term window where the ingestion at this time is more important than ingestion at other times of the day? Long story short, the proposed anabolic window actually seems to last 24 hours post workout, according to some research, rather than one hour post workout. This is where um, muscle tissue has an increased sensitivity towards nutrients and this effect is not as short term as we proposed. So now the question is, if you're eating enough protein throughout the day, that is probably your most important factor, as there's no one hour window where you have to consume something. So anabolic window actually lasts 24 hours rather than one. So how much protein you get throughout the course of the day is more relevant than what you have immediately post workout. Um, one of the things to point out is Alan and Brad, who are both very, very clever individuals, um, concluded or in their discussion section um, of their paper, said that protein pre and post workout is a relatively good fail safe option. 
So some people, I think, have taken the research and gone too far in one direction with it and said there's absolutely no need for protein post-workout. Alan and Brad are very, very good at being objective with their research and changing their views as new research comes out. And they said that at the moment, there's, there's, no, there's not enough supporting data to conclude the anabolic window. However, there's nothing necessarily to support the fact that there's no need for protein post-workout. So just because it might not be crucial to ingest protein immediately post-workout, it still isn't a bad option. This will depend on you whether you've ingested protein immediately pre-workout or if you haven't eaten a meal for a few hours, for example, due to the proposed anabolic effects of each meal at lasting, say, five to six hours. So here are the take home messages for you. Carbohydrate ingestion immediately post-workout is only relevant in a narrow subset of individuals who are endurance athletes or people who are training more than once per day. If you're going to train in a few hours time and you finished your first workout, you do have a need to replenish muscle glycogen to improve performance. If you're seeking muscle hypertrophy and you're training once per day, the need for carbohydrate ingestion immediately post-workout appears to be null. Protein ingestion immediately post-workout appears not to be as important as protein quota throughout the day, but still has a relevance um, depending on meal frequency. So there's a, a proposed anabolic effect of a meal and how long it lasts. If, so if you haven't eaten for a few hours, protein ingestion immediately post-workout is still not a bad thing and it still may be beneficial. There just isn't enough research to say that it's absolutely vital. So carbohydrate and protein only if you're training again later in the day. Otherwise, protein only. But most importantly, are you hitting your protein quota throughout the day? <clears throat> so rather than looking at um, how much you're having in your anabolic window, as it were, just view it as you make sure you hit your protein quota throughout the day. And if in doubt, protein ingestion pre and post workout is not going to be a bad thing. Perhaps new research will come out which will change that, but at the moment, that's a good fail safe option in their words. So I hope that's been helpful for you. That's kind of summarized the, the trends in the research. It's important to say that at some point this video may be completely outdated. So it is present up until this point. Um, people need to keep their finger on the pulse. As research changes, views should change. Um, never present your opinion as fact. My opinion is not fact. I'm just presenting my view on research by other people. At some point that research may be outdated, there may be new research which um, proves it to be incorrect or less than optimal. So at the moment, that brings you up to speed with post-workout nutrition. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, please send them to my Facebook page, which is Ben Carpenter Personal Training, or my Twitter page, which is BDC Carpenter, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.